Back to the phones. We're talking to Anne in Victoria. Good morning. Hi, Anne. Go ahead. Okay, I do not hear her. Hello, Anne. One more time. All right, let's talk about Visa. Okay. Um, visa. So if you think about it, the financial sector is a big part of the market, both in Canada and the U.S. <clears throat> um, growth has been hard to come by. Um, one group within the financials that has done remarkably well over the last number of years is what we'd call financial technology. And I put Visa into that camp, companies that provide plumbing for the industry. Uh, Visa, of course, is in the payments business. They're the most dominant company in the world in electronic payments technology. Uh, and, you know, of course, they make money on transactions. So we know that Visa has been dominant in North America for a very long time. Globally, though, the growth in, in cashless payments has been really exploding uh, in India and in China. <clears throat> and Visa is a big beneficiary of that, of that theme. So in a world where secular growth is hard to come by, this is one part of the market that is seeing very strong secular growth. So stock's been very predictable. We've seen very steady rise in the shares uh, and very good growth. You know, revenue's growing in the mid-teens and likely to continue to do that. Earnings growth has been in around 20%. They've been beating estimates fairly steadily by small margins. So this fits into a growth-oriented portfolio, and we're in a market where growth stocks are leading the tape. So uh, we actually don't own Visa currently. Uh, we own some MasterCard. Uh, and we own some Fiserv, which is also, you know, plumbing for, for financial services. But I think it's a good sector to be focused in, a great company. All right, David, next up uh, is your namesake, one of them anyway, in uh, Burnaby, B.C. Hello there. Hi, Mark. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. David, my favorite guest that uh, ever comes on this show. <laughs> wow, that's two now. Wow, I, how about that? I have a significant position uh, in Safeway, and I was just wondering if uh, you feel this is the time to sell, or should I wait with the uh, buyout talks happening? and the announcement that they're distributing uh, Blackhawk shares to the Safeway shareholders. Right. And Mark, just a quick question for you. Are they really trading at a PE of 2.58? I'll take a look here. What do you think, David? Well, I have them trading at a, just about 30 times estimated earnings. So it's not inexpensive. David, um, clearly there's you know, potential catalyst here. There's discussion about private equity getting involved, uh, and that you know, often drives up share prices in the short run. I would take a hard look at the rest of the group that it's trading against. The grocery sector uh, as a whole is not one of the leading groups in the market. You'd fit it in sort of in with the consumer staples. So the defensive stocks have done a little bit better over the last uh, few weeks as some of the economic data has been a little weaker. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily the best place to be focused. And so it becomes a bet on whether you think there is a catalyst in the short run. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't venture a guess there because I don't know. Uh, what I do know is estimates in general have been coming down for the stock, uh, and the sector is probably not the best sector to be in. I might take the money uh, and, and move on to do something else. Uh, David, you asked about the price-earnings ratio. Bloomberg has it here on estimated earnings at 27. David mentioned about 30. Uh, and just quickly, though, Safeway had a great 2013. So did Kroger. Yep. Um, what, what drove that, and is that, did you think that maybe you missed that? Well, I think that, you know, you, you're in a world where you've got relatively low food inflation. In fact, you can almost say deflation because food prices came down through the course of the year. Uh, so margins were okay, but it's very hard to get revenue growth when there's disinflation in, in your products. And so that's one of the issues you're facing, seeing very low revenue growth. So not an area in which you're interested, as you mentioned. Here's Paul, who is in Red Deer, Alberta. Hi, Paul. Hi, thanks so much, Mark. Yeah, David, another uh, David Burroughs fan here in Red Deer. Don't let it go to your head. I was going to ask about um, Davidson Henderson, please. I took a position in this stock here uh, fairly recently, uh, uh, a couple of months ago. They've uh, just had a, a good quarterly result. They're right at their high. Um, I'm just uh, mulling, maybe adding a little bit more to my position. Thanks so right. much. Uh, thanks for the question, Paul. So Davidson Henderson has been a long time holding. Uh, at Barometer, it's be in our top 20 positions in the firm. Uh, it is also fits in the financial technology uh, sector. You think back to what this used to be, you know, printing checks. Uh, and today, you know, they've had tremendous success with some of their acquisitions. Uh, their U.S. acquisition in uh, financial technology has been very, very successful, and the numbers came through to show that. Uh, so, you know, you're getting paid a 4% yield. Uh, company is growing uh, nicely. We've had a big pickup in growth over the last three quarters, up 4%, up 9%, up 18%. Uh, stock's behaving well. It's in the right sector. 
if you, if you don't want to just hold the stock, I would consider adding to it. All right, David, there are more questions on the other side of this break on North American Large Cap. Stay tuned.